I was born in Heliopolis, Egypt, which is a suburb of Cairo. In 1951 or two, President Nasser took over the country. And at that time, especially around 1956, the, the Suez War, and so at that time, the Jews were asked to leave. A smoking Port Said greets British expeditionary forces as they arrive for an assault landing. The city had been consistently bombed for days before the amphibious operation. Oil dumps go up in flames under the pounding, and the harbor is littered with sunken vessels, some bomb victims, others scuttled by the Egyptians. We had bombs coming down. I was sleeping in my parents' bed. The whole family was in there just because we could hear all the bombs going off. And uh, that's when my dad decided that's it. Uh, and he applied for a visa. And so we went to Paris for one year, waiting for our turn to come into the United States. And in 1959, I was 11 years old, we arrived in New York and took a train right to Columbus. We were sponsored by HIAS, the Hebrew Immigration Aid Society, which really helps a lot of people, not just Jews, uh, but anybody that wants to go to another country because they're being abused, they'll pay their way, and then you have to pay them back. And I remember my dad every month would just put that check in until he paid it all off. And uh, again, we just lucked out so much that we got to come to the United States. I love this country. As a child, you know, it took a, a year or so to get accustomed to it. Uh, they put me back at grade because of my language, but eventually I caught up pretty nicely. And my parents, God bless them, uh, they're both gone, but they really uh, wanted us to speak English at home. If you speak English at home, we're going to learn English as well. And so it wasn't uh, you know, keeping the old country in, it was welcoming the new country. I loved painting as a child, and uh, I would always doodle, and my relatives would say, oh, you're good at this, you should, you know, keep going. And then uh, in high school I did it. Uh, went to college for one, uh, two semesters in fine arts, but then my dad said, uh, how about uh, switch into something that makes money, which I should have never done. I went to mechanical drawing, and then Ohio State asked me to leave after that because I wasn't doing so well. <laughs> but I didn't really do any art uh, until I turned about 40, 41. I took a class uh, with a local artist uh, here in town, Lindsay Stout, and she really, um, was so supportive and she says, you've got to keep going, you've got to keep going, you've got talent. And from that, I was able to create a career in the art as well as sales and business. You better love color. <laughs> it's, it's my thing, I love color. I started out with watercolors originally when I turned 40, uh, after I took that class, with, and it was a watercolor class with Lindsay. And it, it, the colors for me weren't bright enough. They weren't striking enough. So I switched to acrylic. And the way I start, I really have no idea what the piece is going to look like at the end. I kind of start with colors and shapes. And then if you notice my art, the faces are all, it's all about faces. And my faces, as uh, primitive as they are sometimes, they really do exude a, uh, a feeling, a mood. And uh, a lot of times my uh, collectors will say, you know, I see something different every time, every t time I look at it. And to me, it's more about that you change every day. You know, we all get up in a certain mood, so th that painting may strike you a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, it's, uh, I love my faces because I get lost in them and in reality they're all the mood I'm in it when I'm doing it. As the, the painting comes together, a lot of today's topics come out in it. That, that whole thing about immigrants, how we get here, how we uh, strive here, how our country uh, is really 
it's so great because of the immigrants. And you know, now when I see people uh, wanting to keep them out, I'm thinking, that's crazy. Um, so that does come out in the paintings a lot. The people, you know, against other people. I'll do some paintings that way that eventually will come out. I did a show on the homeless one time. Those topics somehow come out in the paintings. I travel a lot, so those inspirations come out when I walk around the streets of Brazil, Mexico, uh, Europe. Uh, you come back and you can't wait to start painting again. And, and that, those travels come out in the painting. So to me, it's about everyday life that shows up. A couple of years ago, my son said, Dad, you should try the digital art. And he got me started with a couple of the apps. And what happened is over time, I, I became pretty good at uh, figuring out what brushes, what uh, colors, and uh, so I, it's the kind of thing that uh, I, w I could be watching TV with one eye and drawing on the other, uh, with the other. And um, so over, the, over time, it really became uh, the way to, that I could create. Here's one walking by the pyramids, talk about my background. <laughs> so it does come out. There's a parking, I mean, a... Uh, a uh, coin <laughs> for the uh, parking in the middle of it. This came out too, let my people go in a sense, you know, it's, uh, that was also the theme. It's, it's funny how it just comes out. It's not like I really plan it, but uh, it, listen, if it's gonna come out, it's gonna come out. Uh, I love this piece that I did about family. You know, even grandma cooking with her love, that the, the food that she makes. It, I just get lost in it. I want my paintings to not just be nice to look at, but I want them to penetrate that soul. Because uh, it comes from my soul, in a sense. And, uh, you know, when somebody looks at a painting, I want them to at least take a few minutes and look at it and see what I'm, I'm, I'm trying to, to portray in there. 